guys, welcome to episode six of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. So I hope you guys are having a great week this week. I am podcasting a day later than I normally do. It has been really crazy around here, as usual. I think I say that every week. Um, mostly my baby boy has wanted a lot of mom time this week. He has been so cuddly, sweet. I think he's maybe hitting some milestones. He's, he's looking at his hands and his feet. Um, and I think that yeah, in my experience, when kids start to hit these milestones and they're growing a lot and their brain is growing a lot, I think that they need to come back to security, like have some kind of security with their their parents or whatnot. So anyway, I have been doing a lot of baby cuddles this week, which is totally fine. Um, but that means that some things just had to be put aside. So um, I was able to squeeze in a podcast today on Friday, and I'm really glad to be here with you. So Thanks so much for being here and just sharing some of your time with me so we can chat about knitting. Um, yeah, so I have not had a lot of knitting time this week either um, due to the baby cuddles. So <laughs> it's, um, that's okay. We, it'll be there when I get there, right? But um yeah, so let's talk about the knitting that I did do this week. I actually um, have been true to my nature. I have been doing a lot of monogamous knitting this week. Um, this is the large chunk of yellow I got done on my Wondrous Moth Shawl. This is um, a design by Lindsay Deegan. I've been working on it for quite a while now. Maybe it's maybe been a month already, but um, yeah, I did the entire, entire piece of it, of the yellow, and I really love it. It is this, yeah, I was gonna say I love this color, but I was also going to say this section, I'm gonna show you kind of a close up here. This section I have really enjoyed. I don't know if it was last week or maybe a couple of weeks ago, I had said about this that I get tired of garter stitch. I, it's not that I get tired of it, it's just not my favorite stitch. Um, so this section was a pleasant surprise because as you can tell, it actually has a lot of stockinette in it, as well as the garter ridge. So this was really nice. Um, this section was also really great because, um, I'll just show you basically the construction. I had these long panels, this here, constructed first. And what I did is just continued with the yellow all the way down and then up the other side of this section and um, basically with decreasing made it into, um, it's getting big here, <laughs> made it into a V shape. And so the really nice thing about this is that uh, I got all of these long rows done first and so as I was coming up I was decreasing and it got shorter and shorter until I got here and so a lot of top-down shawls are you start you cast on a few stitches and then increase and so by the time you get down to the end of the shawl um, as many of you know it is some long long rows but with this since I started with the long rows first. This is a very short row now, which is great. So what this, um, oh, I want to say one more thing about this that I really liked. I'm a very practical person. And this was so handy to have all of these 
garter rows, these bumps, I guess, um, because you're supposed to repeat the pattern a certain number of times. And so it was very easy to count how many times I had done the pattern repeat just by those ridges. So I was really excited about that. You know, it's just the little things that make me really happy and excited. So, um, so yeah, so the next section that I have is the rest of this V and it will just eventually even up. This will be straight across the top and then it'll be a small um, V of a contrasting color. And um, so the, that'll be, that'll finish up the top. Now I'm not really sure what color I'm going to do next. I, so I have the pink piece that goes on the bottom. This was actually the first piece that I constructed. And it's kind of a teardrop piece, teardrop shape. And it actually goes on the bottom here. Let me go ahead and show you. It goes in between these two kind of red pink pieces, if you can visualize it. So it will be stitched on at the very end, kind of like that. I can't really show you very well. Um, but I'm not sure, I'm thinking of putting blue at the top, the same um, kind of blue, it has some pink undertones here. I'm thinking of putting that at the top, but I'm not sure yet. And then after I finish up that V at the top, I will have a finishing design on this edge here, on both of these edges, and I'm really excited about that part. Um, I have the pattern here. Let me just show you what it looks like. It is going to be so neat. It's so unique. And um, this is probably the biggest selling point that um, sold me on this pattern. Um, it's these pieces here. And um, that's the very end. I'm not sure. I'm thinking I was going to do them in yellow, and I have, how much do I have left here? I think I have 26 grams left of the yellow, which isn't going to be enough, I don't think. So I'm thinking, if you can visualize this, I'm thinking of doing a um, mint green, which I don't think I brought with me, but um, thinking of doing a mint green with those, uh, I don't know what they call, let me see what she calls them in the pattern. I think she calls them squiggles. I'm not really sure. Squiggles. I could be making that up. Oh, I don't know. I printed it off and it cut it off. So <laughs> anyway, um, I'm pretty sure she calls them squiggles. Whatever they're called, I'm really excited to knit them on because it is going to be so fun. And, and then that's it. Um, then I have to sew, I guess I have to sew the pink um, or stitch the pink piece onto the bottom. But I am thinking I'm gonna do like a bright mint green. I do have a skein of that um, that I've used in the past for like, I think I've used it for maybe cuffs and whatnot on socks. So um, I have quite a bit of that. I'll have to weigh it and see, but I think that that would be, Neat. I have a similar color. Let me just show you a close up in that. I do have um, a similar green color in there, so I think it would um, it would coordinate well. And I mean, I've used so many different colors in this shawl anyway. It's like, why not? Let's just throw another color on. Um, I I do really like this shawl. I think it's really pretty. Um, but I just I laid it on out on my bed this morning and was looking at it and just putting some different yarn colors with it and I just was laughing to myself because there are so many different things going on in this shawl and um, I think in hindsight maybe I would have planned it out a little better I really like it. Um, it's very bold. It is very, very bold. I love color, so I will wear this with pride. Like, there's no problem with me wearing this. Um, I do, I think if I was gonna plan it out, I probably would have been a lot, I would have done safer colors. Um, 
but I'm kind of glad I didn't do that, you know? I mean, it's for me, it's so easy and safe to say, sure, let's do, you know, maybe three different colors and do some neutrals and put those together. Um, but I get really, really bored if I'm knitting something like that. Um, I think it's really pretty. I would totally wear something like this design in neutrals would be so pretty, especially this section here with the speckly section is actually supposed to be striped. So it would be so pretty with like, um, you know, a light and a dark, something with high contrast here. That'd be so pretty. But um, I know me, I like color. Um, I have no problems wearing color. So I know this isn't probably everyone's cup of tea. Um, I have different shawls that, uh, I'm just gonna be perfectly honest, my husband um, doesn't exactly like when I wear them when I'm with him. <laughs> um, but that's okay. He still loves me, so it's okay. Um, if he wants to be wear safe clothing, that's fine. I'm going to wear things like this, so. Um, anyway, yeah, let me tell you, I know I've mentioned it in other podcasts, but let me tell you the colors that I used. These are all my hand dyed yarns. Um, this is Bubblegum. This is Heartbreaker. This is Waikiki. This blue is Cobalt. And this neon yellow is Saturn. So those are the colors I've used, and I think I have most of those in my shop right now. Um, they're so fun. I love this Waikiki. It's it's really great, and they all just I think they all work well together. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about that. It's really coming along. I feel like I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with this, and um, so that's always a a happy moment. Um, so I've mostly been working on this. I may have put a few rows into my socks. I don't think I've done much. So I don't think I'm even going to show those today because I don't really see the point. Um, I am excited because I have I'm like planning my future knitting, I guess, future knitting plans. Um, I hope to not work as much on my shawl this week. I, want, I plan on doing the V of the shawl, the top triangle part of the shawl. I plan on doing the rest of that. And I would like to finish, I'd like to finish my Evil Queen, the Evil Queen socks I've been working on. Um, I have, I'm trying to think how much I have left of it. I'm on the second sock, and so I don't think it would take much to just finish that sock up and then throw some heels in. Um, now my other pair of socks that I'm working on, they have ways to go. <laughs> so it would be really nice this week to um, finish up a project, and because I really would like to cast on another pair of socks, I'm, I have some yarn I really wanna use. So, um, and then also, I have the beekeeper cardigan coming up. Um, that is a pattern. It's actually a knit along in pattern by um, Marie of Olive Knits. And I actually have a pre-order for some yarn that I will be using in my cardigan. And um, yeah, I have a, a pre-order of the yarn. I actually show it to you. I have some right here. Um, this is the yarn, it's called, it's kind of messy, it's been in the bottom of my bag. This is called Honeycomb, and it is a really pretty deep gold, it has some warm tones in it, um, and um, so yeah, I'll be using that, I'm really excited to start. Uh, the pattern just came out, so really looking forward to that. Um, still pretty nervous about actually doing it in four days. Um, it's a four day nose along for a cardigan. <laughs> um, so we'll just see how it goes. I mean, if there, it's not going to harm anything if I don't do it in four days. Um, I, my concern is that I will get 
you know, three inches net in four days, and that's all I have to show for it. So uh, we'll just see what happens. Um, but I am excited because the design is so beautiful, and I think I'll really enjoy wearing it come fall time. And um, the other future knit that I'm thinking of too is I'm actually going to start a test, another test knit. Um, I have finished, I think last month I finished a test knit and it still hasn't been released. So um, I can't show you guys yet. I'm really excited to show you guys when the time comes. Um, but I will be doing another test knit. I'm going to be starting it and um, it involves some color work. And so I, I had thought about doing it in a super wash just because that's what I have available. It's so common, but I really like non-super wash yarns, especially for color work. It just kind of makes sense to me anyway, um, to do a non-super wash. So I am actually going to start carrying a non-super wash uh, sport weight uh, merino wool in my shop. And um, I think for now, I will just be doing it as a special order. Um, so that doesn't really, it's not complicated or anything. I mean, basically, you tell me what color you want, I dye it and I send it to you. It's, um, it's actually really nice for you because you can have any color you want. You can have um, you know, a semi-solid, like a tonal color. You can have a speckle, whatever you want. I dye it and send it to you. And that way you're not having to wait for shop updates or whatnot. Um, I do that in all of my yarn, actually. So. Um, I can help you put together colors. I love doing that, so please ask for help. <laughs> ask for help cut with colors, because I love it. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited for that test knit to start, and it is a bit of a time crunch. So um, I would like to, before I start on that, I'll probably be starting on that in about a week, maybe the end of next week I'll be starting on it. So I would really like to get some things finished, some current whips finished now. Um, I do have, so that's that's all the knitting I have this week, um, but I would really like to show you guys a couple of things. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm looking at it here, I just um, purchased something that I have wanted for a really long time. Um, it was a bit spendy, but it's handmade. It is so wonderful and so useful. So let me show you what I got. This is my new acquisition. This is a, a ball winder that I recently purchased. It is from, I'll just hold this up, Fiber Artist Supply Company. I actually purchased this on Etsy, but it looks like they have their own um, site, fiberartsupply.com. And I am so happy I bought this. Um, first of all, the construction is beautiful. It's wood, it's heavy, it just, it feels really nice. Um, it's constructed really thoughtfully. Um, I'll give you an example. This piece where the um, yarn is fed from the swift um, to the winder itself or where, you, where the ball is made. This actually can be loosened. Let me see if I can show you. This actually can be loosened right here and um, positioned so it's just a better, it's a better, uh, at a better spot, I guess. And I've had this issue with um, just finding a place to put my Swift and winder. It sometimes can be a little awkward, the angles and whatnot. So this can actually be put here, it can be put he back here. Um, so that makes it really handy depending on where you're, you can um, anchor your Swift and where you can anchor your winder. Um, you know, I would say most of us probably don't have a dedicated space for crafting and for yarn. Um, I don't actually. And um, to set up a winder and a swift, it's 
a lot of space. So this is really nice because it works with the space you have. Um, another thing I really like is um, this can also be positioned like um, closer to the winder or further away. So that's really nice. This piece um, where you where your yarn feeds through, it's actually quite, let me see if I can show you that. It's kind of a, has a, a good sized circumference. So it can um, cater to a good number of yarns. Um, even like I could see if you had some art yarns or some super bulky, this would work really well, especially because this, and I really like this, is a um, quite large, you can see the circumference is quite large on this. So um, it would work with large skeins of yarn, not just 100 grams. If you had some larger skeins, it would work really well. And the best thing about this is that um, this is powered with this belt. And so, you know, most of the time with um, yarn winders, and I'll show you, I have my old one here and I'll show you, it is, it is a mess, but um, they're powered with gears and, and the teeth in the gears, it's just, it's a mess. But this has a belt. And so look, I'm barely touching this and it just is so smooth. It winds so quickly. I love it so much. And I'm so happy that I, uh, I bought it finally. I've been looking at it for a while. Um, it came really quickly. It was packaged wonderfully. Um, yeah, so I am super happy about this, especially because I do offer a winding service in my store. And so if you want your skein caked up before and, and shipped to you so you don't have to wind it yourself, I do offer that. And this is just gonna make that task for me a lot more pleasant. So let me show you my old winder, the one I have been using. This is my old winder and it's just your really standard winder. Um, I'm just gonna show you really quickly some of the issues I was having. Um, one of the really and this is just this is just a bad issue luckily it's never it's always happens on my yarn it never happened on a customer's yarn which is good but this is how this is powered with these um teeth and gears and i can't tell you the number of times that i had a strand of yarn stuck in here and i would have to take the whole thing out and um and fix it it was oh gosh it was just awful and I've had yarn um, I mean basically I've had to cut yarn out of there it's just awful so that was definitely probably the most serious issue I was having with that the other issue uh, and the gears slip too I don't think I mentioned that the gears slip and so um, if you have wound cakes before on this you guys know if if something goes wrong you get a tangled cake your your yarn tensions wrong it's just a mess so um this is the other thing so this is what provides tension um from the swift this doesn't stay up so anytime i would wind yarn you know it's supposed to stay up um but it doesn't it would fall down all the time and so what i would have to do is hold this out and then wind with this hand and it um it was just a pain i hated it this was very inexpensive i think i bought it on amazon um but for as much as i knit and um as much as i use this piece of equipment i'm very happy i invested in something um that works properly <laughs> because this does not work so I'm done with that. I will never use it again, hopefully. And um, yeah, so I was really excited to get that new um, that new winder. But um, yeah, I wanted to show you one last thing this week. Um, this is another one of my shawls that I've made in the past. This is the Building Blocks Shawl by Stephen West. I did this as a mystery knit along. And in maybe like two or three years ago. Um, so let me go ahead and show you. I 
loved this mystery knit along. This was really, really fun. Very unexpected, as are most of Stephen West designs, right? I mean, you just never know what you're going to get, which is great. But um, so this is, it is massive, absolutely massive. Um, the cool thing about this shawl, you started here, you had four different colors, um, and throughout the shawl, they are mixed in different ways. So it creates all these different colors just from four skeins, which was so, so fun. I used, um, these are all of my yarns. This is, I don't think this is, it is a peach, but I think I call it neon coral. So neon coral, Midas, which is very, um, it's similar to honeycomb, except it's, um, it's, it's lighter in shade. Um, then I had cobalt, and this was called, this is Chinese Garden, I believe. I don't have it in the shop right now, but this, I'm just going to give you a close-up of this because it incorporates brioche, it incorporates very clever decreases, garter stitch. Um, it's really nice because it has this I-cord bind off at the top, kind of gives it structure. It's a very, very stretchy shawl, but I'm, let me show you how long this is. And I don't think I made the large either. I think this might be the medium. I'm not sure, but it goes from here all the way. That's the middle all the way out. I mean, I can't, I can't even make like on my wingspan, this is way, way larger than my wingspan. Um, I think these pieces are cool, the pieces that kind of hang down like that. But um, there's another piece, I like that. But I remember blocking this and I barely found a room large enough to block it because it was so large. <laughs> this is another one of those shawls that um, my husband doesn't exactly like when I wear it with him. But I mean, if I get lost, he'll know where I am, right? He'll be able to spot me. It's perfect. And I really like this too because it goes with um, a lot of different colors. Actually, it goes great with navy blue. So if you have a basic dress or top like this one, um, it complements it really well. So I loved creating this. I think this is actually the right side. Um, loved, loved, loved this. This was a very fun knit. And I really hope, um, I think he normally has mystery knit alongs the end of the summer. So I'm really hoping that he does another one because I'm definitely doing it. It is such a fun thing to do. So yeah, this was, this is the building blocks shawl and there's all different ways to wear it, but um, it's, it was very, a very, very fun project. So let me go ahead and show you a few of the skeins that I dyed up this week. Um, I won't be having a shop update. Like I said, baby needed mama. So won't be having a shop update this week. I will be having one next Friday which is June 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So let me go ahead and show you some of the things that I'll have. Okay, so I dyed up some new colorways this week and I haven't named them yet. So I won't, I can't tell you the names, what they will be, but um, one thing I did want to mention is that um, I, changed my website, I figured it out, changed my website. So instead of my products being alphabetical, which they were before, um, they will be organized according to newest products first. I think that will be the default from now on. So that's actually a really good thing for you guys. I know I haven't had any complaints about it, but I know for me personally, if I was to go to my shop and try and find the new products that, that I had seen um, 
for a shop update, I would be a little frustrated. I mean, I can search for the name of a product, but they wouldn't come up first in my shop. So I have changed that. So that should be a lot uh, more convenient for you to shop there. And um, yeah, so I hope that that helps you guys. But um, so let me show you some of the skeins I, I dyed up. So first of, all, first of all, I dyed this one, which is so pretty. It is a bright pink and a deep green with some um, kind of like pops of yellow in there and a light green. And then also there are some really nice tonal speckles in it. So this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I also have another one of my favorites. I like pink, obviously I like warm colors, but I have this, which is so, so pretty. It is a mixture of red, a bright pink. We have some um, orange speckles, some bright green speckles, as well as some tonal speckles in there. So this is just beautiful. And I think this would be so pretty in a fade. Um, this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, then I have this one and I was just trying to do a really contrasty um, blue and orange together and I really like how this turned out. I have some different colored speckles in there um, where the orange and blue meet. We have some really neat um, color changes. So this is, I can see this knit up as a really cool pair of socks. Um, this would also be a neat transition piece in a, um, in a fade, I think. If you had um, a skein with some orange in it and then a skein with some blue tones in it, this would be a really neat, almost like a transition or a bridge between those two colors. So this is such a bright, fun skein. And then I have um, this skein. I think I'm going to call this Sunspot because to me it just, it looks like, you know, when you see footage of sunspots. I'm, I really am kind of into astronomy. I like um, that kind of phenomenon. It's very interesting to me. So this is the first thing I thought when I put all these colors together. I thought, wow, this looks like a sunspot. So that's probably what I'll call it. Um, it is a beautiful mixture of bright yellow, neon yellow. We've got some um, bright orange speckles throughout, pink speckles, as well as some other colors. So I think this, when I, I was thinking about this and what I would make with it, I thought it would be obviously a great pair of socks. Um, I think it would also be really neat in a fade. Um, yeah, so um, the final skein I brought with me today is um, this one, and I had shown this on my Instagram. This is just a really neat mixture. We've got pink, orange, we've got some blue, um, some greens here. And I think I'm gonna call this um, Leeward Sunset. Um, it reminds me of the beautiful sunsets we used to have um, on the Leeward or west side of Oahu in Hawaii. And that's kind of, um, echoed by the pink and the orange. Then you've got the beautiful like blues and greens. It's like the ocean. And of course, some really fun speckles throughout that. So um, those are some of the skeins that I will have next Friday for the shop update. Um, I also plan on um, having some 4th of July kits in the shop and I'm so excited about these. I'll, I'll have a limited number. They will be finished next week, but it will consist of a uh, project bag, a um, skein of yarn that will match the project bag, 
and also a really cute um, charm or progress keeper that I made. So I will have those, um, I'll have those in the shop during the next update next week, but I will show you on next week's podcast what they look like. So I think that's about it that I have this week. Um, if you like this podcast, I would so appreciate if you could give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And I love to hear from you too. So please leave me a comment below, or you can also contact me at my website, pineappleyarn.com. So until next week, I hope you guys have an awesome time knitting and I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,